Hey music makers, welcome to the studio. My name is Dean and today I am super excited to show you a proper GarageBand alternative for PC and Android users. You see, over the last five years, it's been my passion to train songwriters in how to cross over into recording and producing their own music. And that requires me to show them how to use a recording program. And typically I've used GarageBand because it's free, it's very easy to use, and it's super powerful. The only problem is that GarageBand's only available for Mac users or the iOS version for iPhone users. So here recently I did some more digging around and I was so excited to find BandLab. And in this video I'm going to show you GarageBand and BandLab side by side so that you can see how powerful and user friendly BandLab really is. So if you're a PC or Android user looking for an alternative to GarageBand, this video is for you and let's dive in. All right, so we are currently inside of GarageBand and in just a moment, we're going to go inside of BandLab. And so all you have to do to get started with BandLab is create an account with them, which I've already done. It's free. And once you have an account, you can hit create and start making music right away. Now I do wanna note that you need Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge to use BandLab in a browser. But that said, you can download it on a mobile device if you prefer to make music that way. So to start, let's look at GarageBand and BandLab side by side and we'll notice there's a lot of similarities in their structure and their layout and even where they put some of their tools. First of all, I'm gonna show you how to create a track in GarageBand. It's this plus button here and then you get four options Options. You can do a software or MIDI instrument, a microphone track, a guitar or bass track, and then an automatic drummer track. So I select whichever one I want, I hit create, and a new track appears. And then right over here to the left is my library for the software instrument. So if I don't want the classic electric piano, I could click on a different menu like piano, click the Steinway Grand, and now... I have a Steinway Grand that I can play and record here in GarageBand. Now in BandLab, if we wanna add a track, it's very similar. Instead of being right here, the button is just a little bit over and we have basically the same options in a different order. We have software and MIDI instruments. We have automatic drum loops or drum machine. We have a microphone track. And then instead of one combined guitar and bass track, they've split it into two, but essentially we're looking at the same options. So I'll click on a software instrument. It adds a new instrument here. And instead of having a library over here to choose from like GarageBand does, its library is down here. You can see I've picked the piano menu. I could choose tons of different other kinds of sounds. I'm gonna stick with piano for now. I can go down here and choose lots of different kinds of pianos. So this is the grand piano, but I could select, let's say the lo-fi piano. Super cool stuff. And in both programs to play and record these software instruments, you can plug in a MIDI controller or you can use your typing keyboard. You can see down here is Z to play this S, X, D, and C. Now, if I go into GarageBand, I have to hit Command K to pull up what's called the musical typing feature where I have basically the same options where I can come in and play using my typing keyboard. So as far as adding tracks and their software instrument libraries, I would say BandLab and GarageBand are very, very similar in this area. So now I've recorded the same little part in each DAW and let's look at how we edit them. In GarageBand, you can double click or you can hit this scissor tool right up here and it brings up what's called the MIDI editor where you can move notes around, you can move them back or forward, you can use tools like quantize, you can change the velocity of single notes. And now here inside of BandLab, I will double click that. It brings up the MIDI editor again. You can also change it down here from instrument to MIDI editor and same idea, you can move those notes anywhere you want to, you can shave them down if you want. They also have the quantize tool, they have the velocity tool, so a very similar setup between the two programs. So next, I wanna add a microphone track into each program and see how they compare. So I'm gonna hit the plus button, click the microphone icon, hit create. You can see this track comes up, and the thing that I want you to notice is that here to the left, we have some presets that give you some preset effects and processing that you can add automatically into your song. And this process 
processing is found down here. And so they're presetting these for you and just giving you a cool sound without having to know how to mix. But if you do know how to mix, then you can of course come over here to the EQ tab, do some adjustments. You can add in a litany of plugins of which you can actually change all of their parameters if you so please. So there's all the mixing capabilities you need within this vocal track. Now in BandLab, we're going to add another track here. I'm gonna choose the microphone icon. The program will ask you to get access to your built-in microphone, or you can choose an outboard microphone by switching up your input device and your channel here. But as far as presets and effects go, that is found right down here, and you can click this menu here. And again, you have a similar menu with all kinds of vocal presets, which when you click them, it's giving you some preset effects and processing, which you can adjust, or if you really know what you're doing, you can add effects again from a litany of options. And of course, you can adjust the parameters on those options. So again, it's very similar in this regard. So again, I went ahead and sang the same line or about the same line into each program, and I wanna test out some of these presets. So here in GarageBand, I'm gonna to go to voice, I'm gonna click on the bright vocal and give that a test. And let's test the dance vocal. And lastly, the tracking vocal. Next, we'll move into Band Lab. We'll come down here, hit Effects, and we'll test out some of the presets they give me. So let's first go with, oh, uh, Sky Sound. Next, we'll go down and let's try, let's see here, Dimension Chorus. That sounds really intense. It's kind of pretty. Let's test one more. Let's go down to Mega Pop, see how that sounds. So to me, both programs are very similar in what they offer as far as presets for processing and effects. They're also very similar in the plugins and the effects, the manual effects that you can add into the song. Very cool on both programs. So next, let's look at loops in each program. These are little music clips that you can drag into your project. So in GarageBand, we go over to this little button here, the loops button, and it has a huge library of loops that you can choose from by instrument. And I can even search by genre or feel. And then once I find one I like, I simply drag it into my project and it's ready to use. Now we'll look at loops in BandLab and all you have to do is click this button down here. A menu comes up again on the right side of the screen and there's are grouped into packs. So if I click on lo-fi, you'll see lots of lo-fi packs. I can click this top one here and you've got a bunch of lo-fi loops that you can again pull into this section of song and move that around. But you can also search by genre of music. You can also search by the feel. Do you want chill or intense? Just like in GarageBand. And again, I'm gonna say they are so comparable in this regard. Now, there are tons of other features that we could compare on all day. But one last feature that I wanna compare is automation. This is an advanced mixing tool. And in GarageBand, you simply hit A on your typing keyboard to bring up what are called the automation lanes. And you can click in those lanes and adjust volume volume or effects manually at any given point in the song. So now let's go over to Band Lab, and instead of hitting A on our typing keyboard, it's actually gonna be this little button right here. And I can do the same thing. I can click at various points and change the volume manually if I so desire. And so again, they're super similar in this regard. And in my mind, both of these programs are very similar. They're very easy to use and they're super powerful. I think you should be really excited to get access to either one of these programs. So that's it for this video. And I hope you're super pumped to find a proper GarageBand alternative that's free, 
really easy to use and super powerful. And if you would be interested in seeing me do a full breakdown tutorial of how to record in BandLab, then let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough interest, then I just might make an in-depth tutorial on it. So this has been Dean. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. And again, I'm passionate about training you how to cross over into recording and producing your own music and doing a really high quality job of it. So if that's something that interests you, I would love for you to stick around and I'll catch you in another video very soon.